Hi everyone! Two weeks ago we learned how to find a coloring with Delta Plus watercolors with the deterministic algorithm. The running time was order of delta plus log star of n. Now we will solve the same problem with a randomized algorithm. The running time will be simply order of log n with high probability. The algorithm and its analysis are really easy. Let's start with the simplest possible idea one could imagine. Each node just checks which colors are currently free in its local neighborhood. Then each node picks a random color from the set of free colors. And then it checks if there are any conflicts, if I managed to pick a color different from the colors of my neighbors, I can stop. Now, this sounds really promising, but when you try to analyze it, it's not so simple anymore. So let's make a tiny change in the algorithm. Running nodes flip coins to decide if they are active in this round. And only active nodes try to pick random free colors. And you keep your color if you are successful. That's it. This is the whole algorithm. And it's clear that if it ever stops, coloring has to be proper. But why does it stop fast with high probability? It turns out it's enough to prove the following claim. If at any point you consider any node that is still running, it will stop in this round with probability at least one quarter. This holds for any graph, for any node, and for any communication round, no matter what other nodes have already done. And this means that the probability that a given node is still running after t rounds gets exponentially small. And then it isn't hard to say that after only a logarithmic number of rounds with high probability, not only this node, but also all other nodes have stopped. So, the interesting part is this lemma. How to prove it? Well, let's imagine I'm a node somewhere in the middle of the graph. Let's say I've got k neighbors that are still running. But because I had originally more colors than neighbors, there have to be still more than k colors left to choose from. Now, what's the probability that I can stop in this round? Let's first consider what happens if I'm active. Now, the only reason why I might not stop is that I would pick a random free color that conflicts with one of my neighbors. We will first consider one specific neighbor, B. We have no idea how many neighbors and how many free colors B has got. But we don't care about that either. In the algorithm, I'm making my random choices simultaneously in parallel with B. But to analyze what happens, we can imagine that I roll dice first and V rolls dice after that, or vice versa. So let's do the analysis so that V makes its random choices first and see what's the probability that my choice conflicts with it. With probability one half, V is passive and doesn't do anything. No conflicts. With probability one half, V is active and it picks some color. But I had more than k free colors to choose from. At most one of those can be the color picked by V. So the probability that I make a choice that conflicts with V is less than 1 over k. So overall, the probability that V is active and managed to pick a color that conflicts with me is less than 1 over 2k. This was for a specific neighbor V. I've got k neighbors, and using the union bound, we quickly get that the probability that at least one of them conflicts with me is less than k times 1 over 2k, which is less than 1 half. So, if I'm active, I'll have a conflict with probability less than one half. So I'll stop with probability more than one half. 
and I was active with probability one half. So overall, I'll stop with probability more than one quarter. And this is exactly what we wanted to prove. So the element was this, flip coins to decide if you are active and then pick a random free color. Now, I recommend that you go back to this earlier algorithm idea that I showed first, where everyone is active. What would happen if you tried to do exactly the same analysis for this algorithm? What kind of a running time would you get? <laughs>